Welcome to Great Talk and Entertainment. I'm your host, KJ, and this is the podcast where I review movies and TV shows from all your favorite superheroes, including Marvel Comics, DC Comics, and much more. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Great Talk and Entertainment official channel. Now let's go, baby! Welcome back, everyone, to the podcast. I am KJ, the host of Great Talking Entertainment Official Channel, and this is my spoiler review for the season finale on Max by DC Comics, The Penguin. This is episode 8 spoiler review, aka the season finale. So, if you have not seen this series, y'all, pause this, but give me a thumbs up before you go and watch the Penguin series, because you just give me that thumbs up button, hitting it, and sharing it with your friends, your families, or who people you know are just interested in me or people reviewing movies and shows about Marvel Comics, DC Comics, like any of that, like let them, let them know about Great Talk and Entertainment Official Channel. So if you do something like that, it's a small thing, but it, it's a big impact for this channel. So I truly appreciate that if you did that. But after that, go watch The Penguin Season 1. What a great series. I have a lot to talk about on here. But you guys are going to love this. And I don't want to spoil the ending or anything about this series. So go watch it first. Then come back and check this out. So y'all been warned. Let's get into it. This episode begins with a flashback as Dr. Julian Rush and Sophia Gigante or using that technique that Dr. Julian Rush used on her on the Penguin's mother giving them that flashback as we see where what happens next after the events of Penguin's mom grieving after the death of her two boys which she knows Penguin did as she and Rex have that conversation about it and what's really interesting is Rex suggested to mold him like something like him guys like him they have a spot and it's called loyalty says he doesn't need a dad he needs you he has you he's loyal to you you can have him do things for you that you couldn't imagine but he also suggested to you know murder him take him out kill him too as a young as a young penguin boy as penguin was young as a kid i should say but you know they went to this club like if you remember Penguin's always saying through this season that his mom took him to a club and they would dance. Uh, The first time, I guess, they did that, that was supposed to be the day Rex was going to take him out. Uh, Imagine a little boy that he's just going to take out. And it's very interesting that a young Penguin's speech and big promises that he made to his mother is the reason why she went with it and I tell you what, it it shows how much of a monster that he is, and he's the true villain of Batman's art, you know, so is Joker and stuff, but he's definitely one of the top elite Batman villains that he, that Batman has to basically take on or stop for preventing doing any type of crimes, and so this shows him how evil he is, right, and it's, this is so, it felt so comic book, and it felt great watching that way, and it was just so cool seeing that, and it gave me a different look of how we were supposed to view the Penguin, too, in the way, like, he he is, like, just not there, and he's always been like that, like, he was just born evil, and as his mom calls him, the devil, this show really references that and what's really interesting that's like the how this show ends well not the whole show but how this episode gets towards to the end it ends to that last thing of just him being like the monster or the devil and it's I thought that was pretty cool very clever uh, to do that and it's like a punchline you know, like a joke with a punchline. It's kind of like that was the punchline. That was the pun to this whole episode. And I just thought that was really cool about that. And then they show a more current. And we see when the big bomb explosion happened by Sophia. 
and after Penguin gets captured by the detective who work kind of works for Sophia at the time, he you know he he kidnaps them, but you see this this like gang of people like some of her supposed to be penguins crew members but they're not all not all of them are loyal to him they kind of work for the other people and you know even victor's raw speech they dip because they didn't care if penguins dead or not they're just here for the drugs you know so they can go sell and make some money off basically and you know victor tried to give that raw raw speech and it didn't work out they just dipped him and right there we see that Victor is very loyal to Penguin and now he's standing up for him he's getting more involved he's taking more risk you know he has a lot to learn definitely but he was definitely ready to complete the goal the mission and succeed in whatever Penguin was planning to do so there's a lot going on but it was really cool seeing Victor this character this character basically just get to from there from where it started to now and I just thought that was really neat and I appreciate how this show really you know shine on him on this character and I like that and then Victor goes and picks up the penguin from the hospital and now remember they captured a uh, penguin and and Sophia tortured him and penguin's mom to admit to each other that well she wanted penguin to admit that yeah i killed my two brothers and she sophia wanted penguin's mother to admit that she hated him she was mad at him and what a brutal scene because it it was just nuts but i have a theory i want to share but i'll share it later on at the end of this uh, podcast but what i liked about that is penguin never broke they hurt Penguin, they freaked him out, they scared him a little bit, but he kept to his story that he had no idea, she don't know what she's talking about, he was playing dumb. But it was interesting, as soon as Sophia and Dr. Julian rushed and the one of the goons, thugs, was getting ready to cut off her pinky, boy, he went berserk. And he got out of the chair and shot everyone up. But then when they go to the hospital, because if you remember, Penguin's mom had a an episode and she had a stroke. So she had to go to the hospital. But even then, he like hid in a room and he's in survival mode. That's one thing about I liked about this whole season is they really highlight how Penguin can survive these tough situations. He was just stapling up is a stab wound that his own mom gave him from a broken like beer bottle glass right and he still loves his mom like I thought oh, okay he's gonna kill her off no he, he's gonna keep her alive literally because later in this episode we find out that she's just a vegetable she's in a coma so it, it was very interesting I thought that penguin was gonna kill her off but then her uh, penguin and uh, Victor and a couple of other people were going to meet up and plan to get back at Sophia. While, but while that was going on, Sophia made an offer to all these gangs and crew members who were loyal to Penguin and said, look, I'm going to put a bounty on Penguin. Whoever gets him, the ward is, you get everything, the territories, the business, the house. She was just going to leave. She admitted that she's just going to leave and never come back because there's nothing in Gotham left for her. And she thought she was smart, but that all failed. That has all failed because as soon as they capture Penguin and they meet by this airport, everybody turns on Sophia and shoots everybody. And then at the end, it's Penguin and Sophia one last time. And we know it's really cool it, Again, it circles back to where Penguin used to be Sophia's driver. And, man, I'll tell you what. From that scene to to them driving, what I liked about that is it just shows how clever P- 
penguin is like and it also shows how much Sophia has to learn like she can't run away when you're in this business the line of work that her dad does or did that penguin does you know escaping is not easy and a lot of times you don't escape unless it's death a classic like mobs godfather mob soprano type story and which was beautifully told in this series and it just gives us an idea like where they're going with this because as soon as we thought she he penguin was going to shoot her behind her head there's the police and they arrested her because in this episode too before all that penguin made a deal with a council member and at first i thought this was harvey dent but I don't know. I don't. I didn't see any confirmation, and I I didn't see nothing on Reddit. I I looked, but I didn't see nothing to prove that that could be a uh, Harvey Dent within the in the in the Penguin series. So I'll just it's I think it's just a regular counsel, but he gave him this story. He told him the truth, but he then he lied during the truth, and the most important part of the lie was. It wasn't Penguin's operation. It was Sal Moroni's. They'll find his body down there because he did die by a stroke. But, you know, these they're going to find bullets down there in him. And they know that the Falcons and the Moronis have always been to war and always been beefing. And, you know, they can make Penguin look innocent. Because everybody he has in his life is gone. And what's crazy is why they're giving that speech. He's telling this throughout that scene. The people who are not loyal were killed off one by one. And so it's very interesting to see that. But the deal is, like, if he gives him that information and can prove it, which he already has and he's got it all set up, that all Penguin wants is to be part of the political game which is very interesting because he says like you know I want to be friends with your friends go to the parties you go to he mentioned a ball room like political like gathering and what's cool about that courtroom too I just want to point out is they had like reference to the uh, to the owls there's a gang of owls in the uh, Batman series they're kind of like the Illuminati but, you know, they, they're the ones who pull all the dirty strings and planning things in Gotham. But with that is the idea they're teasing that Penguin could be running for mayor is an interesting thing. Like, if he plays his cars right and whoever he makes friends with that he gets to meet after this information, which they did, that Penguin could be running for mayor and the guy was like the consul he was kind of like look you gotta stay clean or look clean you know to get what you want so it's gonna be very interesting to see if they'll take that and make the penguin the mayor of Gotham at some point because they showed the the mayor of Gotham right now which we saw in the Batman I thought she died I thought she was Killed, but she must have survived that gunshot from the Riddler's uh, crew. So that's pretty interesting. So they're foreshadowing her death in a way if she hasn't. Like, she survived that, but now is she going to survive the next event? Because Penguin saw her up there while he was at the uh, courthouse. So, you know, she is a, a, a target now to the Penguin. Like, he's not going to forget. He knows who she is. And the idea that she's starting to clean up the crimes and criminals and trying to, you know, burn out or stake out all the corrupted cops or politicians. Penguin's going to make sure that that doesn't happen because he knows what he has to do. So I think he has a bigger plan. And that's just pretty cool that. He went from some street cred stuff to 
he's going to do some big, big villainous stuff in Gotham City. So I thought that was pretty cool. And when we saw that, so then after that, and then that's where we see Sophia get arrested. And she's locked up back in Arkham Asylum, which I thought was very interesting way they're going with her because in that episode too is she gets a letter from Catwoman aka Selena Kyle her half sister and so I like this because and I'm definitely excited to see this character more is we now is she gonna learn from all the mistakes she's made in season one of the Penguin and the next time we see her, whether it's in a Batman film or maybe a season two of The Penguin or some type of other spinoff show that's going to be part of this universe that Matt Reeves is creating within the Batman series of the movie, it would be very interesting. And it's I can't wait to see it, but I do hope, in which they probably will, that she does again she does learn from these mistakes and that she's more wittier and she comes back for revenge like they left the door open where she can get revenge back on penguin and she can take him down you know without you know batman's help right so there's still that and Whatever it said in that letter, I wonder what it was about. And do we see these two team up? Because again, what does uh, these two have in common? What could they do? If you look at Catwoman, she's just somebody who breaks in to like rich people's places, apartments, mansions, or you know, sneaks into a, a, a party where billionaires hang out and she takes their jewelry, their money, their credit cards, their debit cards, whatever. What does she can do and what can Sophia do as a team would be very interesting. But I feel like it's going to be some type of new operation that only these two can do. And I am just curious where they would go with that. There's many ways I can see it. I could see like a, like the prostitution business. Because I remember in this season, I forget which episode, but it was the idea of Sophia running that because the whole thing was about she heard rumors which were true that, you know, her dad choked out a lot of these women prostitutions to death literally with his two bare hands like he did as her mother. And, and so, like, she always kind of liked the idea she would have killed the woman that Penguin was with so that was very interesting but that's one way they can go with that and because in a way that that uh, Catwoman was like that too at the at the club that when we first saw her and, and Penguin of course in the Batman so that's an idea that I could see them going with but I don't know what sex trafficking would would fit well with within the Gotham City and the Batman universe, but that's one way I could see it. Or they can just get back into selling mushrooms again. But there there's something there, and whatever plan they have, I, I can't wait. I don't think they need a Catwoman series, which I'd be okay with, but I think the character Catwoman, I believe that Matt Reeves is going to keep that with the Robert Patterson, the Batman, and keep it as a, a love, more of a love story between the two than, you know, expanding off and telling more stories about uh, Catwoman. But with these two actresses, I just can't imagine them having a small role in this universe, I, I have to believe that they have some big idea because they just want to just drop that type of bomb of a episode in that scene like that. Like to get a letter, not now they're pen pals. Like how does she know? How long has she known Sophia was her s sister? And obviously you could say, well, it was on the news and stuff, but 
I wonder, like, what's her thoughts, and does she know, like, what's really going on? You know, the real truth, not the the ones that have been made up for the news report, you know. So I'm kind of curious where, how long has she known, and how long has she been keeping tabs on, on the whole situation with this and Penguin? Like, it'd be very interesting, because they do kind of connect, too, in a way. And and then at the end of this episode, we saw the most tragic thing I can imagine for Victor. Penguin chokes him to death. But what was really interesting is after Victor said we're like family, that's when Victor is like, man, now nah, I can't keep him. Because after the incident with his mom, he can't have people that close to him because it makes him weak. And when you take somebody that Penguin cares about, you know, he freaks out and look where he, how it it ended him and put him in that situation with Sophia. So I can see why he did it. It just sucks that he did it, but that makes him a true monster or as his mom called him, the devil, you know, he's only looking out for himself, even took the money, but he's trying to make it look like he got mugged and robbed and threw his ID in the water. And then we see him at the uh, end of his of his hotel building. He's moved on up. He's on the top of the, you know, the hotel or apartment, the big fancy. And there we see his mom as a vegetable, and she's in tears. But it's really she she was trying to die, and she don't want to be by her son. And then she has. And then we see this really odd thing, where he has this prostitute kind of resemble his mom and kept telling him tell me how proud you I am and called her mom so he definitely has mommy issues <laughs> and you know that's under all that slick talk and you know easy way he, he's mentally uh, messed up but <laughs> what an ending and of course at the end of that we see the bat single which it indicates that now Penguin has finally made it on Batman's radar. This is somebody that is worthy enough for Batman to investigate. And I'm not saying Batman's the sheriff or some type of god, but like, if you just remember how Gotham uh, police are, they're, they don't like Batman. Like, they don't want a vigilante to do their job. They want to be the one that catches the case arrest the criminals and take all the credit and glory. They don't want Batman to take that, but the Bat single got on, so that means they need Batman's help and they know Batman's going to deliver. So now at some point when we're just waiting on when we'll see Batman and the Penguin face off again. The last time was the Batman film and Penguin got away in a sense, but they he wasn't looking for Penguin. He was looking for the Riddler. So he knows Penguin knows how Batman rolls, and 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 Batman knows how Penguin rolls in this. So it's gonna be interesting for that round two of them interacting again. So I can't wait for that. Now let's let's get into some topics. What did I think about the Penguin season one? I thought it was a really good season of a story to keep us kind of satisfied for a bit until we wait for the Batman 2. And I thought Colin Farrell did an amazing job portraying uh, Penguin. And I just loved everything about it. I mean... It gets you kind of excited for the next thing. But it's also a show worth watching again, I, in my opinion. And I feel like it does deserve a season two if they choose to. But it seems like they're not going to at this point. But if they did, whenever they decided to, this people would be excited and, and want to tune in. I mean it I mean it was all put together so well. We saw certain characters have their chance to shine 
and we see all these characters show more layers where you can kind of connect to these characters. Not like, I guess you can be a fan of the villain, of course, but it's also the idea of, okay, these, this and this happen, and, you know, these are, the Penguin's a serious villain that we should be looking out for, you know, in future projects. Another thing I like with uh, the character Sophia, I just like how well portrayed we see her go from being scared, being, you know, put and locked up away to literally getting rid of all her family members, (laughs) taking over the business. But I also like the idea that she could potentially be a bigger threat like if if they go with the story of her learning from her mistakes this could be a really game changer and to see these this character Sophia and Batman interact would be very interesting too because it'll be the idea of testing Batman's loyalty like obviously he's going to love Selina Kyle but does he love her enough to turn the other cheek around for his his her sister Sophia? You know, could Batman do that for Catwoman? But if he does that, he breaks his rules of being a vigilante, being Batman. And I can see a struggle with that. But I believe that that it, Sophia is going to be the key to why these two don't you know I guess fall in love get married have kids type situation because Catwoman is gonna use Sophia to get revenge on all the people who are hurt her and obviously get revenge on Penguin for hurting you know family right causing this family to rift but that's what I see with with that that's why I can that's one thing I can see happening in that because I believe that the the four characters they had in here were great but I think Sophia and Penguin now are going to be the the two main characters that Matt Reeves kind of focuses on to a little bit more because I was wondering why they would kill off Victor but then I thought you know what it's better now if they don't if they have no true plans of making him a big time villain it's better off that way and that's how I feel like um, Dr. Julian Rush is I see a lot of people and I believe either Matt Reeves or the actor himself who played Dr. Julian Rush mentioned that he was originally this character was supposed to be the scarecrow but I'm glad they didn't because the reason why I don't see that character being the Scarecrow because it wouldn't make sense to the origin story of Scarecrow of why he does the fear toxin. It, it what He wasn't really concerned about Sophia being scared. He was in love with Sophia. He's had a lot of feelings for her. And he survived through the whole thing. He's happy. He has Sophia. Even if she's locked up, he's okay with it because he gets to see her every day. That's all he wants to do is be around Sophia. That's not something Scarecrow does. Um, Another reason why I don't think that either is because I believe that if, if Matt Reeves wanted to do the Scarecrow, obviously he would put that character in a movie. Or I can also see them not doing Scarecrow and letting James Gunn do that because I think James Gunn could direct a Scarecrow character in whatever film whether it's a Batman film, a Superman film any any DC comic films that he's attached to I believe Scarecrow, the character himself James Gunn could take a crack at it and 
do some really cool ideas, stories to tell with that character better than Matt Reeves, in my opinion. And that's why I think that Warner Brothers Discovery would lean towards more James Gunn because that's a character that James Gunn could work with because it's a weird character. It's a strange character. It's not your typical, like, villain-like, but imagine, like, uh, let's I'll just use Marvel, Guardian of the Galaxy. Look at those characters. They're not your typical superheroes, but they're oddballs. But James Gunn's is really good at working with those type of characters. So I look at Scarecrow as an oddball character for a villain that doesn't necessarily match what the Joker does, Penguin does, Ra's al Ghul does, Mr. Freeze does, the Riddler does. You know, those characters, they're, they're pretty basic kind of common ideas of why they would do what they do. But what Scarecrow does is very complicated. And it's a complicated villain. But James Gunn, from if you just look at all his films, especially just in Guardian of the Galaxies, he's really good with those oddball characters. So I believe that the Scarecrow character would be more in what James Gunn's doing in his projects with the DC content of those superhero characters and genre. So that's why I don't see uh, Scarecrow in this particular Batman series universe type thing. But that's just my opinion on that. That's why I just, I never saw that character, Dr. Julian Rush, as potentially the Scarecrow because his his MO don't match really match what that character does. You know, the fear toxin comes from the idea of him growing up, Scarecrow coming up, is his dad was always trying to teach him to face his fears. He was always a I guess a wimpy kid or or a kid who's just scared and needs to be picked on basically and his dad was trying to make him tough. That was the idea of it. So it was just basically bad parenting for Scarecrow in the sense with with his father. So that's why Dr. Julian Rush doesn't ne necessarily show that. So that's why it. I kind of really believe that now most because of Victor's death. Because if, if Matt Reeves wanted something with those particular characters, uh, Dr. Julian Rush and Victor, he would have done something, but the, now seeing Victor killed off, I can def definitely see Dr. Julian Rush being killed off real easy, real soon, and whatever next project that Matt Reeves does, which is the Batman 2, but that doesn't mean that's going to happen in that movie, so who knows, but I don't think he's going to mess with that character anymore, and if he does, it's going to be short period, because again, I don't think he has any real plans for that particular character. But that's okay because what Matt Reeves did in this series was really showcase how much of a villain the Penguin is and how much a big threat he is to Gotham City and shows that all that stuff he's done, now he's on Batman's radar. It shows that, you know, now people are going to take him more serious. And I think Penguin enjoys that type of attention. Like, he's probably ready for Batman, but he's also kind of excited for the drill and rush of that coming. And he has big plans. And obviously, he's already a ruthless killer. So what he did to Victor, I can't imagine what he would try to do to Batman in the worst way if he can get to Batman. So... That's how they set this up. You know, now Penguin's untouchable in the in the sense of it, the way everything is perceived. You know, Penguin's on top of the mountain. He's got the girl. He's got the money. He's got the nice house. He's got the nice car. He's the boss now. Like, he's got it. And so now we're going to see, can Batman knock him off from that is the question. So... It, it's I guess it's more important to showcase 
what this show is about, which is all about Penguin and what Penguin's doing to become that villain, basically. So that's what I like about it. And and again, it was and it was the idea of Colin Farrell just being so good at playing Penguin. Did an amazing job. And again, the whole cast and crew on this show did a great job. I love the the background. I love how Gotham looked. I like the dark and grittiness to it. And I just like the idea of like they acknowledge Batman in a way like it's really cool where they're going with it. So what a great episode. And I just want to share this theory that I said earlier. I have a theory that Penguin was telling the truth when it came to the scene about him saying that he didn't kill his brothers. My theory is that I know they showed it the the little boy doing it but in theory I can see it being the truth and here's why. I believe it's one of those scenarios where you, you say don't trust the narrator to it and it's always been Penguin's mother kind of narrating that story but I believe that Rex was involved and I believe Rex uh, set that up and tried to put it on Penguin because maybe it's not his kid maybe the uh, or maybe the two boys are not his kids but Penguin uh, but Rex is Penguin's father Uh, that's what I think it is because if if Penguin wasn't tr- it was only sticking to the story to survive, but we see that her his mom again like said I can't believe you're gonna let them cut my pinky off like I knew all about it, but he was playing dumb with it, so I don't understand the idea. But in theory, I believe that this story could be true. Like Penguin was telling the truth with that I think Rex was involved and I think he tried to set up a young penguin that's what I think I think that uh, Rex knew that penguin was going to be an evil child and he was just trying to find a way to do that because he was pretty eager to yeah I'll help take out your own son you know but that's just a theory of mine other than that, what a great season. This episode was great. So as for this whole season, I'm going to give season one a 10. It was really good, really perfectly done. I loved everything about it. And the story made sense. They didn't tie in so many other stuff. They kept it really low with the particular DC characters that we've seen. And, you know, they, they didn't plan nothing and they didn't, you can tell that they're not trying to make any type of promises they can't keep. So really great season with that. And I loved it. So that's my review, y'all. Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Great Talking Entertainment Official Channel. Subscribe, hit that notification button so you can always be updated with all my latest content. Thank you guys and peace out.